So once again, definitely we're going to do a quick install of Spelunk on Ubuntu. And what I did, this is the first install of uh, Ubuntu. Um, and I haven't played with Ubuntu in a while. I've been dealing with uh, Linux Mint for a long time. But um, so I just did the uh, sudo update just to update everything, which I did now. And I know we've installed Dockers before. Rick does an excellent job at it. Uh, I know enough just to be dangerous. But I'm going to go over that install as well. That way you guys can have from the beginning to the end. sudo app install docker.io. And the install is, is relatively quick. So, and so while um, that's doing an install, I'm going to put in the chat a couple of links. This is basically uh, installing um, Docker on Ubuntu and then um, installing Splunk in a containerized environment. And like I said, the main thing, the more you practice dealing with the, um, the Dockers and the containers and applications, the better you get at it. Okay. So although we kind of devi deviated from um, hacking containers and AWS, it's still a good point to anytime you install in software to look to see if it's, um, uh, could be installed from a Docker or contain some sort of container. So what I'm going to do now is basically, uh, make sure all the dependencies are installed. And what I did, I didn't use the um, Ubuntu server. Normally I would, but it doesn't have a GUI and I just like having a GUI. So I did the uh, the desktop just so I can use it for other stuff as well. I'm not gonna deal with that error message for now. And then no Docker's installed. And just to test, I'm going to run a image. So this is basically pulling it from the repository. Just a quick test to make sure my, my Docker installed and everything was was okay. So you can see that's the, the latest of that particular uh, image.
process. Now, the thing about Ubuntu is that when you actually run it, um, a little bit different from your typical Linux, you know, Linux, majority of the, the majority is the same, but there's all those commands that are a little bit different. So say, for example, if I want to see the IP address, I get that error message, right? So I need to install this sudo apt install net tools command if I want to use the if config command. And for those individuals, if config is a standard um, Linux or Unix command to actually see what's on the IP address and subnet mask, similar to the I, uh, IP config. But in Ubuntu, I have to do the IPA and I get the same thing, right? That I would typically get from the if config command. If I want to see the route table um, IPR, Okay, and then another look at is the system, the system D. Resolve status. And, right, yes. Oh, I don't know how to spell resolve. Let's go to Rezo Love. All right. This just gives me the DNS servers and all that. Okay. So back to Ubuntu and the, um, so I got my Docker, everything's fine. Okay, so now is to pull down the information from Splunk, right? So what I'm going to do is sudo marker pull Splunk. So this is going to pull the latest version of um, Splunk. And so you definitely want to um, practice using Splunk or just the install. And then after you get the install, take it to the next level of um, getting in the Splunk fundamentals one, and then also the developer's license as well. So that's my, my next step as far as my progression into getting a better understanding of Splunk. And then after that, um, we're memorizing from a cheat sheet perspective, um, basic commands, watching YouTube videos and things of that nature. And then also listening, replaying the videos that Vinay will be doing for us. So any questions as um, as is doing its quick install? Okay, and as as the link says, this is um, Splunk Enterprise. All right, so now we're gonna try to run this guy.
right, put in the password and and as everybody know my password is going to be Cisco one two three four. Uh, now the thing about it also checks the password requirement. So I may not do Cisco one two three four. Let me do exclamation. Cisco one two three four. All right. Splunk. All right. Keep my fingers crossed. All right. So now let's do this. Pluto Docker PS and it's A. Okay. So here's my hello world. And then here's my Splunk. Now, so far looking good. So now what I want to do is um Bring up the GUI. And this command that PS for those unaware just shows me the processes that are running for the for the Docker. And the 8000 is okay, what port will it be listening on? Let's see why my Firefox isn't opening. There you go. So I'm going to put in the IP address of the local host, which is the loopback. Report 8000, hit enter. Making sure from a syntax perspective, everything is correct. That running. Okay, there we go. So the default username admin password was and this is Splunk. Storage engine migration recommended. Remind me in two weeks. Okay. Two messages. Okay, just take me on a tour. So Example of the syntax. I'm going to skip the tour. And that's it, right? So I just wanted to kind of show you the install to show you how easy it is. I'll put the steps and everything in, in the write up that I will actually post as well uh, when I post a video online. But I want to make sure that everyone's on the same page, at least mentally, as far as seeing what the install process looks like in the actual GUI. Um, so when Vinay comes back, we can kind of hit the ball running. We can always all say, yes, we've installed Splunk. Okay, before I share um, some of the the links, because it's actually uh, publicly accessible since I have it at AWS, I want you guys to see if you can find the ports that are open on my server. 
Okay, so I'll go to I'll put in the website. All right, perfect. So this is just kind of a practice what we've we've talked about before in terms of scanning a um, IP. So what tool uh, would you use to try to scan to see what open ports there are? You can put in the chat or you can. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Ernest is saying end map. Okay, so then uh, use your use that. Uh, tool and see uh, if anybody can tell me what open ports they see, because that's going to give you um, your first access to the uh, your own instance of a Splunk container. Because I want you guys to run the end map, but because there's an important point that uh, I was reminded of from, from a previous discussion from uh, uh, Rasul when he had his um, meeting about uh, using end map, and it's uh, it's an important point when you're running the tool on the basic. Uh, commands. So, anybody find uh, the open ports? Again, that was cyberjedination.net. Hey, Ernest, do you find any open ports? I had to get my virtual machine up. Oh, no worries. And just so you know, too, you can install Nmap on Windows. So, that was pretty convenient thing that I found. So, it's uh, install for Windows for Nmap. So. so, anybody, any open ports? Okay, I'll do the uh, basic command here so you guys can see. Oh. Oops. That's... Kind of gave away the answer there, but um, okay. You see what happens when you guys are doing the just a basic command of nmap and cybernation.net. You see port 22 and 5560, okay? But the containers are running on, on different ports. No, okay. Um, so I don't see the, the ports when you just do the basic command is because when you do the scan, the, the default scan, it's just scanning the, 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 the most popular ports, okay? So it's not scanning all ports unless you specify that you want to scan all ports. So uh, I'll give you a hint that um, the range is be in the 9,000s. So to do scan, well, it's between 9,000 and 9,500, let's say. So this is this command is going to scan uh, between those ports, okay? Now you see how they appear here, and you could have missed those if you just did a basic nmap scan without any, uh, without uh, you know doing the whole range, or if you have happen to know uh, smaller range to doing that uh, scan. So. Um, Again, if you just do the default command, it's just scanning the, I think it's a top thousand, top, uh, how many? Top hundred? I can't remember. If somebody remembers, let me know. Top hundred? Top thousand, I think. Something like that. I'll have to confirm. Okay, so um, we see these open ports here. So let's try that. Let me, I'll do this one here, 9121. Let me go to my, and this is open on the web here, so publicly accessible. Get a page here, so. Cyber Nation, Cyber Jedi Nation. Net. What port did we say that was? 9121. Oops. Oh, I mistyped it. Okay, now I have my own instance here of Splunk Enterprise.
All right. And again, it's 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 a unique instance of Splunk Enterprise, so it doesn't interact with those other um, those other containers. Um, and just to go back to kind of what Otha had shown of how to spin up one of these, let me um, show you kind of the same command. So it's basically this one command. Now, the thing is, when you make multiple instances of the same program, what you have to make unique is the outside port. Because the 8000 is the inside port what the program runs on, but you can specify an outside port where people hit. But basically, this is going to say, hey, this maps to this port from the outside maps to this. So in that way, you can have a unique session. So I'm going to change this one now. I already made one that was 9131. So let's make one that's 9132. And the other thing too is you specify if you specify a name, that has to be unique too. So I'll make this one. It's Blunk 8. So again, this is the command. And I'll go to my AWS. EC2 instance. So this is AWS. And I put that command in, and you'll see how quickly it spins it up. There, it's done. So you can see right now I have about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine instances of, of, of Splunk Enterprise running. So let's go back to. Scanning again. We should see that new one there. 9131. Yep, there it is. Okay. So if if, uh, if you want to open one up, um, pick a port. Don't pick this first one. I'm using that one. You can pick another one. If you want to, if you want to get on the interface and just kind of follow along, um, just if you're going to use it, just specify in the chat that you picked that port so nobody else is using that. I don't know how many people want to open it, but you can try your own. Again, it's just going to be cyberjedination.net colon port number. Okay, and the password is. My password number one, two, three. Okay. Has anybody opened one of them or tried to log into one of them? Okay. Yeah, Ernest is taking 9172. So um, there we go. Manesse has 9199. Uh, Ernest, what command are you asking for again? Um, the command to actually install the Docker, like, like not install it, but to um to configure it. Uh oh, you mean when you're running Docker to run it on your own? You know, I'm saying the long command to um to turn up the Docker to configure the Docker. Oh, you're gonna run your own instance? No, no, I'm saying um on this one, or are you configuring it right now? No, it's running. That's the thing. These are running Docker containers that have Splunk Enterprise running for you. So this this means when you go into that um so for example you're going to type in in the browser cyber jedi nation dot net you pick what port oh okay the port i pick is not already configured so i need to pick one of these ports that's already configured yeah so that means you just go to that port that on the web browser and now you have your you're in you're going to be able to log into splunk enterprise on your own instance Okay, but I need, but I need to specify a port that you already have over here that's open already, but no, but right. unknown. It should be unknown. Oh, the service? Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't recognize it as Splunk because of the port. You, you, you know, it usually it's not a well-known port, so it's just a you know open port that any program that you may use, right? So, Cali is not going to know what type of service it is always, right? So, but um, so I guess my question. Go. I guess here my question. So, the ports listed here, 
all of them are running Splunk? In this case, yes. Okay. So, yeah, because I, I started a, how many of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Okay. And I just wanted to show you that, you know, you could, how quick it is. And, uh, of course, depending on your server uh, size, you know, how much it can handle. But I, I'm running a big server right now. So, um, these will be able to run. So, right now, that means those are running. So, if I, for example, if I go Docker PS, it's going to show me my running containers. Right, but my question is, is are we trying to set up another port or just use a port you already configured? No, you're just trying to use that. So let's here, let me okay. show you. So Okay, got it. One you already me, got configured. Yeah, it's already configured for for you to Okay. To, so let me let me make sure here. All right. So then so, so the 9172 it doesn't exist. So I need to pick a diff, different number. Oh, was that one in the scan? Oh, that wasn't one it in wasn't, the scan. It wasn't in the scan, no. So I need to pick a number oh. that's in the scan. That, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, that's why we did that Cali scan, that uh, Nmap scan to see what was live, right? Okay, so let's, got it. Here, let's, let's do that again. All right, so ninety one ninety nine is taken, and what else is available? All right, so I take ninety one ninety four then. Okay, so yeah, so all you do is just put that, you know, like you're opening a web page, but you're going to be on that port. So th this putting on various on, on different ports lets you open the same program. Uh, um, you know, of course, on the same computer, on the same server. Okay. So this is these are all separate instances of Splunk Enterprise running. So the idea was that you know each person could have their own Splunk uh, instance. You Got know, it. You know that you could use as your you know as your own. And it's really just uh, you can't have one running and multiple people get on. Um, but this was just so there wasn't any uh, if you were playing with data. Uh, you wouldn't um, mess up anybody's data. And I got it. This is cool. But it's also to demonstrate, you know, a couple things. Uh, at the end map show you, and then show you Docker, and then show you how you, you know, how you can um, run these uh, open on the internet for you, you know, for for th this is how you know web servers are run, you know, web apps are run, so. Not so open, you know, like we're doing right now, but at least just for that, you know, demonstration to get to get you in. You can go to port seven seven eighty and download a file. So, for example, seven seven eighty. I'm sorry, you'd have to do. Uh, Seven seven eighty. Oh, I didn't like that. Never get my mission. That's strange. Uh, I was just running. Let's see here. Because this was just a web server I had running. 7780. But it doesn't look like it's running here. Okay. Well, let me, because um, what I wanted to show you was ingesting some data and then kind of looking at it. But let me. Before we get there, let me uh, share the links for the uh, couple sites that you can get data, um, all types of data, firewall data, um, I'm gonna put that in the chat here. This is really how you're gonna practice getting Getting the data in and then um, 
doing your searches. So uh, where's the search? Where's the chat? There's a chat. That's one. another one and then let me check this site why it's not Huh. I had this, yeah, I had the web server set up so it, it would it would get to uh, the log file, but let's see. No, it doesn't want to work, of course. Um, let me see. Can I put the file in here? No. Shoot. Let me try one thing. Let me try to restart that Docker container. So Docker restart. You can specify the container. Which was this guy, and you can what's nice, you can use partial. So C54, C54, let's see if that brings us back to. So we started CSV. No, it doesn't uh, seem to want to work there. So let me. Um, Let me bring you to that data that uh, the data set that I was going to look at. So, and then we'll see if we can try to run through that. But let's see, may not be a lot of time. So, basically, it was just a file, and this is what you'll find on those websites. Make close all these here. This one was called log two CSV. So basically you can get a raw data. Let me open that for you. And you see the data here. Okay. And this one has headers, the fields. So source, port, destination port, NAT source port, uh, NAT destination port, action, bytes. So this one is telling you if it allowed it, denied it, dropped it, and then what what are the ports, um, and then how how big the, how many uh, bytes it, uh, it sent. So essentially what you're able to do is You would go to settings, add data, and then you can upload. So in this case, we're just doing it manually. And this basically when you're testing, you're not getting in real time data from whatever source. Um, this is a great way to test with all the files that are available out there. But again, this is just a manual way. But if you go to settings and we'll look at data inputs, there's hundreds of ways that data can come into your system. You could send it from other programs, um, syslog, anything that's not doing a syslog, you can send it to this, to the server. You can have, uh, you can monitor folders, directories. I mean, directories, you can monitor files and directories. Um, you can have this set up to listen on certain ports. So if you, if you have something that's not uh, a standard port, um, you can just set it to listen on those ports and then have your other devices send on those ports. Uh, you can see the scripts. So, so many things you can do. 
Um, if you're running on Windows machine, you can, um, if you don't have other data, you can look at your event logs. This is a great way. There's a lot of information here. Let's see if it has it broken down. No. Um, let me see. No, I need forward since it's not a Windows machine, but um, it lets you monitor a lot of aspects of the Windows machine. So you, when you first start it up, you've got to watch out because there's so much data that uh, you can overwhelm your, your, your computer, all that data that's coming in and trying to be processed. So essentially what I did for the sample was just that file dropped in here. It's going to ask you, let me see if I can run through it again. Actually, you know what? Let me do it on my new, this is. This is one I have running on my machine locally. So, you know what I'll do since I already ran the data on that one, let me run the data on this brand new one. This is one of those instances that um, uh, was running on AWS and that uh, similar to what Ernest had just opened. I don't know if anybody else picked one, but so let me go. This is brand new machine. So let's do this one. So let's go to settings, add data. So we can step through this one. So, again, this is just local file we have. We want to, we can drag it in there. And right now we're just trying to cover the basics so you get familiar with just general process. Um, definitely. Renee will cover a lot more detail as he gets there as he gets through it, but this is just to kind of give you a, a start here. So now this is where it can get interesting. So it's basically a source type that's kind of the format of the data. So right now it's it's since it was that file, that's fine. It has this message here, something about the the time stamp, but that's fine because we can go here and say hey. Use the current time to fix that. So, so you can see it recognized that that format. You can see it correctly put into the fields already. You see that those were the headers that we saw. So that's good. Let's go next. Oh, it wants us to save customized. So let's do a save. Let's just call it CVS two. And for the app, I like to just use what we were in, which was the search and reporting. That's that's the main function there. Let me scroll up. Let me make this a little smaller. Now, this, for example, is asking you just what is this host called? For example, if you had a machine sending data to this guy, you would want to get it had a it would have a unique name, right? So, but this is just a file we put in there. I'm just going to call it. Post one, that's just saying where this data is coming from, and you'll see where this comes into play later on. So, for example, this we'll call host one, but say you have machine sending data, that's we'll call that host two, host three, and what that lets you do is then when you're doing searches, you can be really specific and say, hey, I don't want data from host one, or I only want data from host two, and or I want a combination of host one, two, but nothing else, or one, one and three, or whatever, or you can say everything, right? Now, index is basically what I like to think of as the bucket where you're putting the data. And so um, I'll just put in main. So this can help separate your data if you're um, in one, there's multiple reasons why you may have data in different indexes, but I like to think of it as a bucket. So this can come into play, say, if you want 
um, a bucket that you want one team to be able to search, but you don't want the uh, another team to be able to see that data, but they have their own index. So, for example, a security team may have their own index of their data, or they may have uh, that's they, they want protected from other users of this program. They don't want that, them to use it. And you can add security rules in that case. But if it's all your, you know, if it's if it's all your data, you wanted everything in one index, that's not an issue either. But again, you you make these separations for or later on to to make your searches more specific and and limit the amount of data you have to search through. Okay, so then we just uh, submit that. And then now we can start searching that data. And what I'd like to, I'd like to keep it kind of simple. So you see, you want to think of this as, as your basic, where is it searching the data from, right? So we can be really specific and say that index, that bucket that we just made, we want to look only in that main. And the host, remember we called it where it's coming from, we call it host one. And then the source is the where it came from, the type of the file. So we see that file and the source type is the structure of that, that format we call, right? But I know I don't have other data in there right now, so I won't take all that out, all that out. Index is gonna give me the same output because it's, it's all the data, right? So you wanna think of this basically as, as the search uh, where where the the area it's searching, what it's searching, um, and then this is where you can start putting keywords. Okay, but before I do that, uh, when you have multiple indexes and you want to search everything, you can easily just do um, asterisks. That's everything. So that's uh, like a wild card. Lets you search everything there. So um, we don't have any other data. I can do that as, as well. And search there. So, and then you can see the interesting fields that I already knew about because of the formatting and the fields that were part of that um, document. The uh, the file that we imported so already has that information there. So, um, now what we can do is look at table. A table is kind of the fields that we can format to. So, for example, let's just make this easy and say hey, we want to we want the action fields. You can see them down here. And let's say uh, let's say uh, destin destination port. So, for example, if I just and I take this back out, if I just do this here, we have table. Basically, this is all the data, and we're saying, hey, just show me the, the fields for action and for the destination port. Okay. Now, before on this part, this is where you can put keywords. So, for example, say, Hey, we see what kind of actions do we see? We see allow, and we saw reset, roll. Say we just want to see the allowed. Actually, we can do the field to be more specific. Action equals allowed. Oops, did I misspell it? Or allow. There it was allow. Sorry about that. Um, so now I'm just looking at what's allowed, and I see the destination port. So just really simply, I mean, there's so much more that would be added to, but you can think of this as, hey, this is the data I want to look for, and then after that, you can do uh, your formatting of that data. Okay. Again, you'll see these search lines, you'd be multiple lines, and there's so much you can do calculations, you can do a lot of formatting, that sort of thing. So, um, 
this is just to simplify this data here. So uh, let me show you something here. This may not show us too much, but this is where you can get different visuals. And this is what's really nice. Uh, this is where you can change the visual depending on the type of data to match what you want to look at. So I don't know if this is going to show us too well, but um, let me go back to my other instance because I installed additional apps. Okay. Now what? So, for example, if I go here and I show you, say, it says find more visualizations, it's going to look on the website, Blunk Base, I think that's what they call it, and you can install additional apps that are going to give you different uh, additional functionality. Okay. So, for example, this one, I didn't, this is brand new, I didn't install those apps. Let me go to my other instance that I was working with. Uh, where is it? Uh, that one. And I can show you. Because I was playing with this one here. So let me put this back, this search here. I think it's a little bigger. So now, for example, I, when I was creating this one, I call the index firewall. Okay, and again, that's what I, what I like to think about as, as a bucket where I put all that data. In the action field, I said, it can be anything. And then when you have multiple searches, you want you can put and. So you're saying action field equals anything and bytes have to be greater than one. So these this field, these packets have to be greater than one. Okay, and then just another subsection here was head 100 means I want to limit the data uh, to 100 events because sometimes it just gets overwhelming. If you have too much data, you want to first analyze it a little bit. And then remember we had this table, which was just giving the formatting of the output. So let me go to visualization. I think I had this one, yeah. So this one, I added an app this one's called a sand key diagram. This one's really nice just as a visual. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. No. Actually, that was a nice one, depending on the data you have. Let me go to this other one I had. So you see, these are the additional apps I, ins I installed. So this one was a good one. Okay, so this one was nice because here are the fields, action. So we had the allow, drop, and deny, and then we have the destination port, source port, and packets. So right here it gives you something kind of easy to look at and say, hey, hey, what's this traffic being dropped? Some port down here. Sometimes if it's a lot of data, it's not going to go down to the very detail for that, but you can look that up. Just it's kind of showing you. The thicker the line, the more hits there on that one. But it can kind of give you a visual of, hey, this these allows seem to tend to uh, go to some port down here under 10,000. Um, their source port they're using is something here. So you can kind of think, see if it's something suspicious, if it's, you know, some source port that it shouldn't be using, and then kind of the amount of data that's you know, that's happening for that action allowed. So you can kind of follow. Sometimes you can see. Yeah. There's more, more quick visual, but you'll go down to the data, see that data to understand it. But um, there's the, just, it was really to show you that different formatting. This one I just downloaded to, to try. I haven't tried this. Let's see if this gives me anything now. Because the format, depending on the, the view you want to see, uh, has to be set up a certain way. Uh, but this one was a quick one just showing you, hey, these are all the, each line represents one of the, the log files and uh, showing you the drops, the allows. So all the drops, we're see, you can kind of see anything dropped is on port 445. We're dropping all that. Allow, you can see multiple ports are allowed. And then uh, deny, you can see these these ports are being denied. And again, just kind of visuals to, to for whatever kind of need you have. 
So those are some of the basics. Anyone? I was hoping that. Um, oh, let me see. Ernest, um, look in the chat. Uh, server error. You got some kind of server error, Ernest? Sorry, I didn't see that earlier. Yeah, it was saying something about um, it was not a HTTPS site. It was not a secure site. Oh, that's just your browser. So you should be able to bypass that. You didn't okay. let you bypass? I uh, know I wouldn't, but I was. I don't know. I had to. I had to look back into it. Okay, let, let's try it right now. Let's see. Cyber. What port were you trying to use? Ernest, what was your port? Yeah, I was using um. Ninety one, ninety four. Okay, yeah, that works. It's just it's just your browser is just depending on security settings of your browser may not allow, um, you know, sites that let's see that, um, that the um, the page is not up to date. So that's just your browser. So you may check your browser settings to lower the security setting, but of course, put them back. <laughs> But it's working, but you can see it right here. So, okay. I mean, that was the basics. Um, didn't look like too many people were to get on, but we can try that another time to to, to get you in there. But again, um, you can see how quick it is. Quick uh, it is to um, get your instance running, um, and this is can be on your machine. So I'll put the basic one in the chat so you can have that for your use. Uh, let me see. And again, you can run it locally on your machine. I'm I'm running it both on my machine and I'm running it on my EC2 instance. So, but either way, depending on your resources, it's uh, can be pretty quick. So, Rick, have you found um, is running in an instance on AWS pretty reasonable? Yeah, if you're running one, on um, because you can you can do quite a bit with that free tier machine. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you could you could run it. You know, I can't say that. Done a lot of big searches with that free tier instance, but you you can you can if you're not running anything else, it should be okay. On that instance, on the free tier, because uh, they don't give you much on that free tier. I think they gave you one CPU and one uh, one gig. I can't remember, but um, you can always run it and test and see if if it's uh, how the CPU looks with that. So. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for for kind of getting through some of the basics to show you, you know, data ingestion, and then some of the kind of what this search string is is, is doing. So, is there any questions on the on the, the interface or search string? Um, no. Can you pop that string in in the chat as well? This one, yeah, sure. I'll do that one. Let me. Uh, Of course, it's going to be dependent on what you call your index and that sort of thing, right? So, um, we can we can discuss that. Okay, I just want to look look at the um, the command for the Docker container so you guys understand it a little better. Um, let me see. I don't know. Let me take this and put it in Notepad. I can probably zoom. Just so when you go to run it, you can make your own adjustments as needed. Yeah, thanks a lot. Sure, just so it's a little more clear. So 
Okay, so as we saw, Docker run. I'll cover the I'll cover the basics for now, and then we'll go back to some of the other flags. But Docker run. Okay. Now you want to specify your. What you're doing here is you're specifying your outside port. Okay. And that's how I was able to do. Remember. Run all those instances, those nine or ten instances, because I changed the outside port. Okay. So this is basically you're running, you're specifying the outside port. The inside port should be given to you, and this, you know, so you have to look at their the website. Um, whoever, who's ever, you know, maintaining the uh, Docker image, and see what they specify the inside ports to be, because that that's what the inside the program is running it. Because if you change this, the program's not, internals aren't changed; it's not going to work. So. You just want to specify this port here. You can make that whatever's open on your computer. You can just go to that port. Okay. This is just arguments that it's putting in that it needs by default. Now, this was just my own password. You can change that as you want to. Just you have to make sure it meets the criteria. So I just, I know if it, if it's not the right criteria, you'll have to look at the logs and it's not going to run. It's not going to spin up and you're not going to know why, unless you look at the logs and then it might tell you that this password is not, uh, doesn't meet the security. Requirements, so I've got 1 that does meet it and works so you can use that. And that you saw that the, uh, username was admin. So that's, uh, that, that's by default. And then when you have this. Here, this name, you're giving the container a name. Okay. So if you want to run, and then this is the actual image, it reaches out to Docker Hub and pulls down that image. Because remember when, 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 when uh, Otha did it, um, there's, there's different ways you can do it. You could first pull down the image, and then it's basically a, it makes a copy on your computer. Um, and it's, it's stored there, right? On your computer, um, but if if you run this command, you don't have the image. It's going to do that anyway. It's going to do a pull, and then it's going to do a run. So either way, you want to do it. But this is the image name, okay? And this is just names the container. If you don't name the container, if you don't have this, it's just going to give a random name, makes up a name for the container itself. So again, copy. Okay, so you run this first one on your computer and you want to run a second instance, isolated instance. Um, can somebody tell me what we need to change? Port number. Which eight thousand okay. in front. All right, perfect. Yep. And you can make that whatever's open on your computer. So let's make that eight thousand one or whatever you want to make that. What else do you have to change? The name or the password. Not the password. You can have the same password, but you want the name of the container. So we can just call this Splunk 2, okay? Because if I go to the containers, let's see if it's going to. Be hard to read. Yeah, I don't think we see the whole thing here. So let me see if I can go to my Kelly and uh, show you the names. Docker PS. Uh, yeah, see, it's it's hard to see because it's kind of scrunched up. But here are the names of the of the some of the containers. 
Cranky Franklin. So if you don't specify that name, it's going to make up a name. And what I found out, <laughs> it's kind of funny. They use a, a adjective and a scientist name or somebody famous. I can't remember if scientists or, 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 or just somebody famous, but you can see, so it's called Cranky Franklin. It's just the container name because I didn't specify when I spun it up. Um, other ones did specify names. So, but no big deal there. So, all you have to do is if you have, if you're specifying a name, you would, you would just change the name. So, it's just make sure your port outside port is different than your first one. And then the name is different than your first one. If you're running multiples of the same program, right? Of the same image. And that's how I'm able, that's how you're able to run multiple um, instances of the same program. Um, but that's also how you're able to run any kind of application, even you know different operating systems because it's isolated within that container. So question doing it this way, you don't have to um necessarily register with Splunk to um to have these containers like this. No, not no, you don't. The only thing you would need to sign in for is um When I showed you though those extra um, like if you the applications, to, yeah, the extra apps, the add-ons, because there's a lot of add-ons. So this one's just for visualization. But let me let me show you. So for example, I want more. Find more. It's looking at the website. So for example, let's see. Hey, I want uh, I want this whatever flow flow map is install. It's going to okay. log into the website, but you can just create a, a, a username and password on the account on the Splunk page. It's it's uh, free there. Okay. So you can just uh, sign up there, and that's 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 the username and password you would use to download apps. And there's hundreds of apps that um, you might find useful. So you can see. Let's see here. Yeah, it just goes on and on. But they they try to make apps that help you integrate any kind of data or any kind of system out there. So the one that we, I showed you was just so we can have more visualizations. Um, and you'll, you, if you look at that website, there's just so much on, on that you can down, so many add-ons you can, you can put on there. So, but um, the only limitation basically would be for the free version is just doesn't let you do emails, you know, send out alert emails. And then you cannot do, um, I don't think you can do multiple users. It's just ad admin is the, the only user you can have. So, but other than that, you can do all those searches. Those are, those are full searches that you can do um, on a fully registered program. So. So it really lets you, you know, use the program to, to its fullest. So I really would encourage people to take advantage of it because you'll really uh, uh, be able to use it to its fullest potential. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Was there any questions about the program, about how we ran the Docker, how we, um, about just kind of the, the the basic functions we ran through Splunk Enterprise. You know, thanks a lot for your help. No problem. Yeah, and if there's any uh, any questions, always feel free to reach out. Um, so let's see. Let me look in the chat. Let's see if there's anything I can find it. Where's the chat? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, one more thing.
but in general, it gives you a good idea. Again, here you can do keywords. Again, what I want to try to get across was this first section, sort of the data where it's coming from, and then keywords that you want to look for. And then after that, it's sort of formatting and and um, or limiting calculations, and then you can do formatting of the data. Again, there's a lot more to it, but we just want to guys we want to get you guys uh, uh, used to all the uh, basic terms. So once we get out, to, you know, all to the other really, uh, so I mean, uh, I guess I, what I'm trying to say is so much more you can do uh, with the data with this Splunk. You can you can ingest any kind of data and 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 and, and, and really limit to what you want to find. It really helps uh, helps you sort and format and really find what you need and make sense of all that data that you, that you can uh, pull in. So. All right, I don't see any more questions in the chat. So if nothing else, I'll end I'll end the call. Thanks everyone.